Welcome back to the shop, everybody. So it's gonna be a busy next couple of days. The uh, fellows from Flex CNC are gonna be here and they're gonna begin the install of our Flex CNC machine. Uh, Chris will be here today. He's one of the technicians. Uh, tomorrow, Andrew, he's gonna be here to, uh, to help. And uh, they've actually hired the help of Deep South Crane. They're, those guys are gonna come in just to help with the rigging because what has to be done here is uh, the machine, I'll show you again. We did have the video where we brought it in, but we'll do a recap here. So when Flex sends their machines out, they come in two pieces. So you have this piece here with the gantry in the bed, then you have the rest of the bed right there. So this has to be bolted together here. There's pins and bolts where this all goes together. And then, uh, so there's that. And then once you get the machine in place, you have to mark all the hole locations in the floor and then drill the, drill the uh, concrete for the lags and then uh, get the mounting plates mounted down there. And then once the mounting plates are mount, uh, bolted to the floor, you actually set the machine back in place and then get, do get, get the machine mounted to the, uh, the leveling plates on the concrete. So it's a little bit of a process. It's definitely a lot easier if you have an overhead bridge crane or you have a way to easily lift the machine out of the way. But since we don't have that, that's why uh, Deep South is gonna give us a hand with the heavy moving so that we can get it up on some skates or however they decide to do it, move the machine out of the way. My idea was to maybe uh, pick it up, move it to one side, drill the holes, move it back to this side, drill the holes. But however they decide to do it, that's gonna be their, their animal to handle and I'm sure they're gonna get it done. So plan on giving you a, a uh, video of the install to show you the process that it takes to get the Flex CNC installed. And uh, when they get here and they get, get going, I'll, I'll make sure that I get some video to share with you guys. Uh, also going to have my electrician here this morning. He's going to start running the circuit from the transformer up there and get it ready to uh, hook the machine in once they have the machine in place and it's ready to go. All right, so we'll bring you back once we get some uh, activity and get the machine, uh, start getting it set up. All right, the crew is here. They're all set up and they're going to get ready to start moving this guy around. We've got the fellas from uh, Deep South Crane here today. They've got their heavy equipment. They're gonna give us a hand on getting this machine moved around. So they'll begin. They're back there on the gantry area now and get it picked up and on some skates so we can get it moved around and uh, kind of get it uh, positioned exactly where we want it. All right, so the guys are working on getting the gantry section up. Right. So the I'll rough level it, get it kind of bolted down, and then we'll make the uh, table up to the gantry. Okay, good deal. You guys are back there getting it kind of raised up, getting it on some blocks, and they'll get it on these skates here, kind of get it in position. So here's the, here's the leveling plates right there. Just some uh, steel plates burned out and how these work, so you got the holes there. So it's gonna be like this. Once the concrete's drilled, you'll have the anchors installed and then the plates sit down over where the anchors are and then the machine sits on these steel plates and the leveling bolts push against the steel plate. So that's how that's, how that's gonna work there on all the feet. All right, so we've got this section nice and square. We've got it measured against the wall nice and square. Now Chris is actually gonna be, he's gonna be marking the whole locations for the feet right there so we can get those drilled. Once 
All right, they've got this side in place. They got the studs in the concrete there, and it's sitting down on the pads. Chris is working on getting it rough leveled now. He's got a couple of the stair at 199 master levels out. I think the uh, Deep South guys are getting ready to get, get the bed ready to move. They got it on uh, two skates here and they've got one on the other end there. All right, we've got one section of the Flex CNC mounted, ready to go. We've got the, uh, the leveling pads down there. We've got the floor drilled. And then the crew from Deep South Train is working on getting the bed section uh, situated and getting ready to, to get it lined up here with, the, uh, with this section here pretty soon. we got Chris from Flex CNC. He's here working on handling the install of the machine. Right now he's getting it kind of rough leveled. He's using his uh, Spirit 199 master levels to get it rough leveled. So this is the next phase here, getting this part of the bed lined up and kind of get it together so that we can mark and drill the, the floor for this guy. Now it looks like they got her lined up pretty, pretty darn close there. Pretty close. So 
they're going to start getting it uh, lower down onto the plates there. I believe they'll bolt this in together a little bit and then pick that end up to kind of get it all squared up before we uh, mark the hole locations. They've got it pretty close. They've got some bars that they bolt on both sides there. Chris Gregg, he's getting ready to bolt them on. That'll help kind of align the two together. There's the plate there that they use to kind of align side to side. That looked easy enough there. <laughs> they moved it out of the way so that the uh, holes can be drilled over here on this side. So Chris will get the uh, holes drilled and then they'll move it back to this side to uh, drill the other. They got this side drilled. It's ready to go back into place. Got the O-ring and then a little extra silicone there to seal up the two flange plates when they come together. That'll keep coolant from going through to the floor.
Man, that thing lined up just about perfect. Let me see how many thousandths you're off. I don't know, maybe about 60. It worked out pretty good. They'll use these side bolts here to <clears throat> get it pulled in there, squared at each other. He's getting it pulled over there on the other side with the other block. It's just about there. So this is your pins here? Okay. All right, so this is one of the alignment pins. I believe there's five total. Yeah. So it'll be hard to get a shot of that, but he's got to get up underneath there and drive those in, and that's, that's what'll hold these, uh, the two pieces of bed together, plus some extra bolts. They do have bolts that hold it all together there as well once you get the pins in there. Sounds like one's in. Chris is getting all the bolts installed now, and you can see one right here. There's a series along the top, and then there's some underneath there too that he is working on getting installed. That worked out pretty good. So they got that side bolted together there and then they were leaving the pressure on this end by picking it up a little bit and it just kind of centers itself up. Looks like they got her. So they're getting the uh, control mounted up to the machine now. So it is the next day of the installation of the uh, Flex CNC. It's pretty early right now and I uh, got the shop open and uh, Chris, the Flex technician, he'll probably be here very soon to uh, get started back on the, uh, the Flex. And then uh, Andrew from Flex, he's gonna be here today as well. And uh, they're both gonna be tackling this project to uh, get the machine ready to go. Uh, I know Chris stayed here for quite a while yesterday, last night actually. Uh, all, I think all he did was continue working on level in the machine. This is obviously a, it's a, a pretty large task to properly get this machine level. And that's something that he spends a lot of time doing to make sure that it is leveled correctly. Go, you've got a lot of feet on this bed here that you have to go to each one and make sure that it's leveled properly and then torque down with the, uh, the redheads there. So I, I don't know if he completed it last night cause I haven't talked to him about it, but I'm pretty sure that he's, He's, uh, if he don't have it level, he's probably very close. So we'll take a little closer look at it here. We finally got the uh, control panel bolted on anyway. It slides along that rail there. So you can move the control panel up and down this machine anywhere you want. I, I think he's got the thing level. I, I can tell that it's, uh, looking back there, I can tell you've got at least an inch gap <clears throat> between the bottom of the foot and the, uh, the, the plate, the steel plate that it pushes against. So it looks like we got a little bit of a downward slope to this side of the shop right there. <clears throat> I know he said there's a, there's a couple of blocks that bolt in right here to help uh, hold the top of the rails together. And there's also some kind of um, uh, seal that pushes down in this little gap there as well to help, also to help eliminate any uh, coolant from uh, going down between the two steel plates right here. So that's about where we're at anyway. Still a lot to do, and I believe that they plan for 
two to three days. I think they give themselves three full days to, <clears throat> I think they gave themselves three days because they come in and actually got it mounted in place and uh, bolted down all the drilling and everything. Kind of takes a little while to get that too. Obviously it speeds up the operation if you're in a facility where you have an overhead bridge crane where you can simply lift the thing up and get it out of the way versus having to put it on skates and manually move it around. It takes a little bit more time. So it looks like he's been working on, okay, this is what I saw him working on last night. So he's getting all the wiring uh, connected in to the, uh, the mill head right here. And then uh, Danny, my electrician, he'll be here today to start getting the circuit run from the transformer down. He's planning on coming down the wall. And he's gonna run it underneath the frame and then it hooks in right there. It's a pretty simple operation. So run it right down that beam and hook it in there. He's also going to be running another circuit over here down against the wall that is going to be used for the Heimer uh, heat shrink machine. So that's going to be happening today. So we should have all of our power back here ready to go for both the flex and the uh, Heimer. I got everything just kind of stacked up there out of the way. We're going to be mounting a, uh, a disconnect and a receptacle right here for the uh, Heimer heat shrink machine, the power clamp. All right, and then uh, one last thing I was going to show you is this is going to be, this is the coolant tank and where the chips are brought down into the, uh, the box right here. So this is going to sit, this whole unit right here sits at the very end of the machine. You have the auger that's against the wall that goes up through the machine right there, which helps pull the chips down into the swarf bin, which is going to be this guy right there. You got the screen, and then I believe it holds like, I think it's like 90 gallons of uh, coolant that goes in there. You got your pump and your filter, and all that gets hooked in, I believe right here on the end of the machine right there. Yep. All right, so lots of good progress. I'll continue to keep you updated on what's happening, but um, this long, stuff that would be otherwise boring in a video. We'll skip that and we'll get to the uh, more interesting stuff to show you how the install is uh, coming along today. All right. So it comes, uh, this cat track, we laid this cat track now for shipping to get in the truck. This cat track has to be put in there. We'll mount right down here. Looks like it holds it in place. And is that also like a junction box there? Yeah. You got two different tracks connecting to it. You could look at the uh, top of the machine there. On this side of the cable track, we have a bracket that just holds uh, the wires on this side. Gets bolted up over here. Getting a uh, look at the top side of the spindle here, too. This is a Z axis uh, pulley and motor. Okay. There's a look at some of the electronics for the flex right here. So, what were you telling me about? That's this the is for the one, it's a spindle drive. This right here. Yep. Uh, the three to the right, you have the Z-axis drive, the tool changer drive, and the X2 motor drive. And below it, there's some power supplies. Uh, the large silver thing is the filter for the spindle drive. Alrighty. I was just asking Chris what these guys are right here. And I believe it's uh, like one of those laser curtains. So reflector on this side, laser on the other side, and you said this is um, Y-axis curtain? Y-axis safety barrier, we call it. 
So if you if the machine's running and you stick your hand up in here, it's gonna it's gonna stop. Okay. And then you have another. That's what this guy down here is too. That's your laser fence, basically. The front one is a laser scanner. It has a warning zone and a safety zone. If you get in the warning zone, your rapids and speeds will drop 10% and it'll start beeping at you to let you know you're there. Give you time to get out of the warning zone. If you stay there and it keeps moving to you, you get in the red zone, it'll stop everything. Okay, all right. Good safety feature uh, built into it. All right, so you're getting ready to add this guy here. Yeah, this is a piece of the rail uh, where this table and two tables join. You have to continue the rail. I've already cleaned and stoned everything. Make sure there's no burrs. Uh, they're numbered. If I push this back farther, it's a A2. We have A3 and A4, A5 here. So it's going to fit in just like so. Nice precision fit. Tight fit. You guys must grind those rails on the ends to to the size you want them. I'm just gonna snug these, oops, snug these bolts. First, and we have a jack plate. Um, there was a step machined in that the rail setting on. And these plates will hold the uh, push the rail down tight against the step. Oh, okay. I just I never noticed that till you said that. There they are, the rest of the way down the machine there. So it pushes it down. Yep. Against that step. On the bottom. Yeah. The All right. Look at that, it's like seamless. Let him come back and torque it. Alrighty. Awesome. And I'll go repeat the process on the other side. Okay. Sounds good. We got the electricians over here. They get, they're working on getting our uh, power hooked in. I do have some caps to finish that off too. We'll, uh, we'll cap those bolts off before we get out of here. Okay. We pulled this off. We pulled this cable track off to assist us in the uh, level of the Okay. So it just slides on those pieces of shaft there, those pins. Slides on and there's a mounting bolt on the bottom. Okay. That's a tray basically for that track to uh, roll in as you're moving the, uh, the control panel down the machine. You guys have been working on getting the, uh, the circuit run to the, to the flex. All right. All right, guys. Well, the Flex CNC is up and running. It is powered in. And uh, Chris and Andrew have been working really good at getting this, uh, this guy set up. There's actually quite a bit involved, a lot more than what I had thought there was going to be, but they've got it ready to go. Um, today, Chris is going to be doing a laser alignment and a ball bar check on it. And that's kind of the uh, final steps to get this thing uh, finished out and uh, ready for service. So. I think by the end of today or possibly tomorrow morning, uh, this guy is gonna be ready to go. So Chris has got the machine perfectly level or as level as he can with a, a master precision level. And then um, he's had to do software updates. I know that they, they've done quite a few things to this machine to kind of get it up and running. They've got the, uh, the coolant sump down here. It's all hooked in. We still have to make coolant for that and get that in there, but there's quite a bit involved in getting the machine set up. So I'm really glad that they come in, um, you know, for a customer that purchases one of their machines, that's part of the deal. They come in and they help you get the thing set up properly and ready to go. So the, um, the tops of the rails is the only thing left to do after the alignment and the ball bar check is done. That's gonna be done next week. So Aaron from Flex, he's gonna be coming down in about a week 
and uh, he's going to help me with some more training on the machine. And the first thing we're going to do with the training is that we're going to come in here and actually machine the rails. So the tops of the rails so that the top of the, the bed here is perfectly in line. We also come in here and skin out this right here too, I believe for five eighths or, or either three quarter, I can't remember, probably three quarter, but that's done. And they actually perform that operation typically at their shop. But uh, for this application here, I was hoping to kind of get a little bit of that on the channel here to show the, you know, the initial fire up and, uh, and, and get this thing rolling. So that's what Aaron and I are gonna work on next week when he gets here is machining those rails. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll throw something else up there and uh, see it actually machine some other kind of component there as well. But uh, Chris should be here, it's pretty early, getting everything set up, ready to go. He'll be here soon, and we're gonna start getting the uh, laser alignment and the ballpark checks done today, and uh, I'll show you what that looks like, okay? All right, so what you what you doing now? Well, it's part of the setup. Uh, the X-axis has a motor on each side, X1 and X2 motors. Okay. And uh, we're running what we call a gantry torque program. It moves every inch of travel, and the motors find their, their most minimal torque at that point, and it creates a compensation file that the, the control will read. So the motors aren't fighting each other when the gantry's running back and forth in X-axis. Okay. So it's a slow process, but... Uh, it, uh, it gener it, it's a program we have, it's all automatic. It'll run every inch of the table all the way down and then create the file for us. Okay, all right. So a little bit of a slow process then, huh? Yeah, Letting it a little bit. But working its way all the way down. But uh, it helps okay. us in the long run. All right. All right, so he's got the, uh, the torque comps completed now. And uh, I think Chris is gonna go ahead and start doing your, uh, you're gonna start doing the laser? Yeah, now we're gonna, we have a Renshaw laser measuring system here. We're gonna comp for error and accuracy from zero all the way to the other end and back. It's gonna run every three inches and take a measurement. And it's gonna generate a comp, uh, what our error is. And then we have a comp table generator. I'll drop that error into the comp, comp table generator and uh, it'll automatically make a table. And then we'll reshoot it one more time and check the laser comp to make sure that uh, we have the error corrected. Right now we're on the back side of the machine. Uh, close to that motor is our X1 motor, and the front X drive motor is X2. After we shoot X1, we'll move over here and we'll shoot along X2. So each motor has uh, its own compensation for position. All right, that sounds good. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. There's a little better look at your... This unit right here is just uh, for uh, material temperature and air temperature and humidity. The actual laser is over here. Our optics are up there. Okay, yeah, you got it on the inside yeah. there. Oh, there you the go. The first optic is a stationary. It's a beam splitter. It splits the beam into two two beams. Okay. And a reflector mounted on the spindle that moves. So it picks that reflector up. It, it sends the beam, beam hit the reflector and come back at every every increment in the program. It'll take a measure, stop and take a measurement there. Okay. All right, so you ready to get going? Yes, sir. This is Renishaw's software. There's nothing... Uh, Fancy about it. I've datumed it. I'm going to tell it to start. We just have a simple program here. We're going to start the program. Okay. Auto cycle start. We're at zero. Does a 70 thousandths overrun and it goes back to zero. And then it'll start running. Okay. Yep. We see movement now. So 
So you said it moves three inches, takes a measurement, records that, and then moves on? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, it's getting down close to the end. Um, when it gets to the end, it'll it'll do a 70 thousandths overrun and then back to 240 inches. And then it'll start back every three inches. It'll take a measurement going back as well. Then we have a, a forward direction error and a reverse direction error. Okay. And then it'll, it'll calculate those together. Cool. Looks like it's at the end of the travel now. Yep, going back the other way. So we've ran a uh, comp down the back side of the machine, X1, motor X1. We've ran the comp, we got the air, we put it in, we re-shot re it. Things looking pretty good. I've ran the first run down this side, which is the, our, we call our X2 side. Yeah. I got the air, I've generated the comp table. Now we're gonna fire this thing up again and start running the final run to check it. Already waiting there. Computer's good. Good. So the running shaw software will tell us how we did. Awesome. So this is you said this is the second run. This is the second run down. down this side. This is our check run to down this side. We've right. added the comp into the control already. Okay. Now it'll make a run and we'll see how we did. All right. We'll show you, show you that in a little while. Okay, we'll let this finish up and then I'll bring you guys back. So we got the data and we put it in the machine and I just want to talk a little bit about what we, what this data can do for us. Like here's a graph running down the X2 side. It tells us here that our linear displacement accuracy was 23 thousandths. And we have a backlash of six tenths. Six tenths, seven millionths. So after we input the, uh, the data from the comp generator, we, we create our error table, and we rerun. Now, we have went from 23,000 accuracy down to six tenths six over tenths. 20 feet. Wow. With a, with a, we have a backlash of a tenth, so that's, uh, that's pretty decent for a rack drive. That's uh, so you're saying six tenths over our full 240 zero inch travel. to 240 inches. We have six tenths of accuracy running down this side of the machine. Wow, that is incredible. It's pretty amazing, honestly, to see such a big machine. You know, that's a lot of weight over there yeah. on that for it to uh, to stay that that accurate as it moves. Pretty incredible. Yeah, very cool. So. This is done then, right? I mean, this yep. part of the laser, inspection. Laser process is done. Okay. We will uh, run a ball bar next to check for uh, servo mismatch to make sure X and Y are communicating with each other to give us a circle. Okay. And uh, yeah, we'll be good. Awesome. Now we have a laser ball, or uh, now we have the Renishaw ball bar system. All right. Uh, the ball bar is connected to my laptop. The software's up, ready to go. We're in the, this is called a ball bar calibrator. They call it a zero dur. Um, it's in there, it's calibrated. I'm going to calibrate it here. So the software takes the measurement. I hit it twice just because. That's, uh, is that a measurement center to center of the ball ends? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So we're going to go to the next page. It's waiting on us. We're going to put the ball bar in the machine, which I have a program in the machine. And it's already set to position. Is that magnetic? magnetic cups? There's a magnetic cup in the spindle and one stationary on the table. Okay. All right. I'm going to come back over here. Reset this since I got in the curtains. On auto. Cycle start. We're going to go to an M00. Start the software. And we're going to start the program. Feed at 100 inches a minute. There. 
100%, 50 inches a minute is what we're feeding. Okay. It's gonna take two rounds counterclockwise and then two rounds clockwise. And the whole time it's doing that is creating a cloud point on screen, which we don't get excited about yet because it has to analyze it once it gets all the, once it gets all the points, the software will analyze it. Okay. So that's moving in a complete 360 rotation. Yes, sir. X and Y are moving together. Okay. And uh, the software is recording the movements the entire time. It's good stuff, man. I've, I've seen this before, but never in person. You know, I've yeah. seen this on other people's videos or on YouTube. We're running a uh, 12 inch ball bar, maybe 24 inch diameter. Okay. So it's gonna come back to its starting point and then stop. Probably gonna go right on by this time and then come back around and stop. Okay. Are you able to see something here that it's, uh, that it's um, measuring? Are you still, still I calculating? See where, I see we're fairly round, that's a good start. Okay. But yeah, we won't. We know I don't get excited about this part of it. Okay. Um, after it's all done, we get to analyze the uh, runs together, and that will give us the real results. Okay. The software will will set an offset to center it, and All right, guys, well, the install of the Flex CNC is now completed with the exception of the finished machining that we're going to be performing to the rails there. That's going to be the next step in this right here. But uh, everything is ready to go. Uh, Chris from uh, Flex, the technician, man, he's been excellent, did a really good job. So he told me that he's got the uh, bed of the machine leveled within one thousandths. He uses a, uh, a two Stare at Master 199 levels and gets it as level as he can within about a thousandths or so. And then, of course, you come back in and, and um, finish machining it. It's lagged down. Every one of these feet that you see down here has two redheads in there uh, holding that thing down, sitting on the steel plates there so that, you know, the leveling uh, screws don't dig into the concrete. So it is uh, bolted down, should not ever be going anywhere. And uh, this guy is ready to go. So. Aaron from uh, Flex, he's going to be coming down next week and he's going to be working with me for a couple of days, uh, kind of freshen me up on the controls of this thing. It's, this is going to be just like my other machines. It's going to take me a little while to get used to running this and uh, Aaron's going to be there to help me. They can actually access the uh, control of the Flex CNC remotely. So this is tied into my Wi-Fi and they can get in here and do whatever they need if they need to help me with some of the programming. Uh, whatnot. So they're going to be able to give me a hand as I start, you know, playing around with this machine and uh, learning how to function it correctly. And uh, even when we start setting up to do some jobs. So I expect there's going to be a pretty good learning curve to this machine, uh, figuring out fixtures to be able to hold work pieces on here. There's been a lot of folks that's uh, just been asking across the channels of what's the plan for this machine? Do I have work lined up for it? You know, do I have jobs already ready for it? The answer is, is that this machine is gonna be here for me to use as I need. It's gonna be available for uh, possible jobs in the area that come up. My buddy next door over at DND, he's always got big fabrication jobs and occasionally he has some big parts that uh, need some machining or could use help with machining. The other day he had a big piece of rectangular tubing that he needed a mill an eighth inch off one side and uh, you know, 20 foot length of material. And uh, that would have been a perfect job for a machine like the Flex right here. So we're going to have plenty of opportunities for uh, fun and interesting jobs and projects to do on this machine. And it's also going to be fun to learn to have new capabilities on here. You can have all kind of different workstations set up on this if you want to, if you want to have multiple workstations. So, you know, have some vices somewhere or fixtures set up in one area, you could be machining. And in another area, you have more fixtures set up that you could go and put parts. 
Uh, there's a lot of possibilities for the Flex on uh, how you can utilize its uh, you know, bed size right here. But we will be uh, getting into some fun projects on this and I look forward to getting in some of those, uh, those bigger, more unique jobs. Uh, you know, fabrication based jobs where you've got structural materials that you need to do some milling or drilling and tapping, things like that. Um, but you can certainly use this for any kind of, uh, I'd say three axis machining that you want. And speaking of three axis, they actually have a, uh, there's, there's a fourth axis that can be put on this. And I believe we talked about maybe adding that down the road, adding the fourth axis. So that would give us capabilities of holding a piece such as a shaft that you want to uh, mill some keyways in or, or you know, any number of jobs where you can use a fourth axis. So that might be down the road. But, uh, but anyway, it's, it's ready to go. So this is gonna be kind of the closeout of this video of doing the install. It is ready to go. I wanted to point out, so this is your coolant tank on the end right here. This is your chip pan. So there is a conveyor in there that you can turn on. And they recommend that you run this anytime you're running coolant because it helps wash the coolant down into this. You've got a screen right there. The coolant goes back into the sump and of course recirculates it. You got a filter there and there's the pump. And then this, you can actually remove this. You can pick it up with the handles to uh, dump that if you need to. So we don't have coolant in it yet. I got to work on that, get some coolant set up. And uh, I think that's about it. So Aaron's going to be here in a couple days and uh, I plan on having the camera and showing you how that goes as well on our uh, machining of the rails. What I was going to point out was that, you know, we're going to be machining the tops of these. This, this looks to me like 1018. Uh, cold rolled flat bar that they use. And we also had some uh, questions about, is this a standard thing they do? Like, you, do you have to machine it whenever the, the customer gets it? And the answer is no. They typically will machine these at their facility. And then when they bring it out, they set it up and level it. In my case, I kind of wanted a little extra video there to share with you guys the process of doing that. So instead of them doing it there at the facility, we're gonna do it right here. Once you get it level, it's bolted down, it's right where it's gonna be. Then you can go there and just deck the top of these rails off uh, to clean them up. And then you also go in here and uh, machine the inside of this out. I believe for either five eighths or three quarter studs is kind of what they size that for. I'm not sure yet, but we'll find out. But I'll, I'll show you the machining of that right there. So really excited to uh, finally see the Flex all set up and uh, ready for some work. And we'll bring you guys back whenever we get to our uh, first machining ops over here on the Flex.